Alright guys, Hatch Cry back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Welcome back to Formula 1 News and Christian Horner is at it again. He simply does not know where to just take the victory and shut his mouth for a little bit. He's stirring up more drama ahead of F1 2022. Who's surprised at this point? Lots to dive into today. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Would you upset the channel? Firstly, this from Carlos Sainz thought was kind of funny. I'm sure Netflix are looking at this and thinking, I'm going to second. Maybe we need to make some alterations for a couple of the episodes. This also confirmed that yesterday by Formula 1 that the Imola Grand Prix will be returning until at least 2025. Pretty good news to be honest, historic circuit, great circuit in general, I think fantastic Saturday usually. Maybe, you know, not maybe the greatest race, not maybe my favourite track, but still, I think a pretty mainstay of the circuit. Pretty happy it's going to come back for several more years. Of course it will. The Russian Grand Prix, the replacement for that, still up in the air. We talked about the potential of going back to Malaysia a couple of days ago. It seems like that's probably not going to be the case anymore, so maybe Turkey is still number one option, I don't really know. Generally the backup track, I guess we'll have to remain and see on that one. This also was confirmed, or maybe not confirmed, but I believe this is going to be the case. These seem to be the new medical car and safety car for the upcoming season. This is an AMG, I think it's the Black Series or something it's called. I'm not exactly sure what this is, the medical car for this year. But uh, both seemingly upgraded to some degree. This is honestly a beauty, to be honest. So hopefully these will be quick enough for Lewis, right? He's obviously, he's complained about that before. I do find it remarkable. Like, this is pretty much, in terms of Mercedes AMG, the premier, like, track toy they've ever created. And it's just nothing in comparison to the F1 cars. When, it, when you see him going on the track at full whack, the F1 cars just toddling along behind them. It always cracks me up. But again, I think these look nice for the new season. This, of course, let's discuss Mercedes because this was Bahrain last year. Now, there has been a lot of talk over the last 24 hours or so about some upgrades Mercedes are trying to make to their car. Obviously, a lot of teams are trying to bring upgrades through. There's some talk about a game. Ferrari, McLaren, are they top of the pecking order right now? Red Bull and Mercedes are not just going to go down without a fight, and they're going to bring some upgrades into the Bahrain test here in just a few days' time. Now, the rumor has it that this new Mercedes is going to be epic, as Mark Hughes points out. That's what the jungle drums come on the grapevine. That's what is being discussed. Now look, whether they can get away with what they're trying to do here, that remains to be seen. But supposedly, an article comes out today from an Italian news source that uh, well, a new car is going to be here for Mercedes and it can be up to a second faster than the previous one. This is what they have to say in the article. It seems to be something to do with the side pods they're changing on this new edition of the car. So seemingly, the car they run here at Barcelona was at nowhere near the car they've actually been working on behind the scenes. So well, this is what they say. The belly is gone. There's some discussion about it. Effectively, the side pods, the revolutionary new Mercedes car, destined for the Bahrain tests, scheduled between Thursday and Saturday, so of course in just a couple of days' time it does indeed begin, reportedly equipped with completely different lines from their proposed one on the W13, which of course took to the track in Barcelona. This is what is described, it would be all, it would be a car almost completely devoid of the side pods, the disappearance of which would have involved an imaginative but effective arrangement of the radiators in the highest area of the bodywork, credited with impressive simulated performances with already legendary gains they describe, of course the translator from Italian, so you might not be perfect we get the picture. Apparently in simulations it's around about a second quicker per revolution or per lap. Now, um, I mean, that would be pretty remarkable. The question is, I guess, if they are going to unveil something like this over the coming days, because it was a surprise to me that uh, given especially what Ferrari have done with their side pods, right, the way they've kind of got this cup shape going on to force the air out the back, I was kind of surprised with how uh, conservative the Mercedes approach was. Very traditional looking side pods on the car. So apparently they've been working on something extra special here to completely gut the car of those. Apparently it's going to make it a lot quicker. Now, um, there was some talk a few days ago that the FIA have basically said, look, if teams try and get around the spirit of the regulations by uh, potentially doing something like this, right, in a kind of a double diffuser type situation, they will not hesitate to crack down on something like that. Then again, though, if, um, well, if Mercedes are able to get away with this and it's kind of in spirit of the regulations, as in it doesn't affect kind of the airflow and um, the cars behind should still be able to follow as is the intention with the new regulations and they can still get away with this, apparently making them a second quicker, this has probably been, you know, gassed up to some degree. I highly doubt it's going to be that effective. But hey, look, we'll see what Mercedes come up with over the coming days. Whether the FIA will let them get away with it, I'm sure like Red Bull will be the first of the protest, right? We'll talk about Red Bull here in just a second, because it's time to talk about Christian Horner. He's at it again. So an interview with BBC, I believe, yesterday. I'm not sure the entire thing has yet been broadcast, but I'll share a clip of it for you guys here in a second. Effectively, once again, I mean, he was asked about the OBW situation. That's just how it's going to be in these type of episodes. And honestly, I think at this point, Horner, he should just take what was gifted by, you know, by the FIA, by Massey on a silver platter, take the championship victory, just go into the new season, right, and keep it calm. And you know, honestly, he doesn't have to say too much about this, but he simply cannot help himself. Like, um, and this really surprised me what uh, what Horner has to say. Honestly, he doesn't really surprise me at this point. But it just um, there's so many holes you can pick in what Horner's saying here that I'll share for you guys in a second. But this is one of the, the key quotes. Was it right to fire him? That being Massey, of course, based on pressure that was placed on him from a rival team. That being Mercedes. That for me was wrong. That is tantamount to bullying. It's passive aggressive. Basically saying that Mercedes are bullying, were bullying the FIA to get rid of Massey. Now, well, look, if the final race hadn't have happened, I'm pretty sure every single team had their problems with the race 
race direction for the entirety of the season. Loads of inconsistencies in the ruling, the safety discussion was being had a lot of the time. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure if the final race hadn't happened, every team at the end of the season would have said, okay, like, uh, Massey wasn't the greatest this year, maybe we need to think about it. It seems that the way the final race has gone completely turned the mind of, of Horner on this issue. So I'll share this clip right here from the interview. A huge amount of controversy around that, that final race in Abu Dhabi. Widely accepted now that the, the rules under the safety car weren't followed cor correctly by race director Michael Massey. Uh, does, it, does it bother you that people, you know, that will always be the thing that people talk about? Does it, does it take the shine off the, the win at all? Or do you actually quite like the fact that people are quite wound up by it? We've well, certainly got people talking about Formula One for the last <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. uh, couple of months, but uh, you know Michael Massey actually didn't break the rules. You know he applied them in a way that they hadn't been done previously, with, with leaving two lap cars at the back of the field. But that was the only variance of what's been hmm. you know normal practice, uh, you, you know otherwise. And I think you know that wasn't our fault. Um, the uh, the safety car came out. We reacted. Um, you know, strategically correctly, we pitted. Uh, Mercedes didn't. They left Lewis on 44 lap old tyres, and then Max obviously had to get the job done on the. I, last I'm lap. just waiting for my children to say they haven't broken the rules. They're just applying them in a way they haven't before. Just a bit of variance. <laughs> just a bit of variance. Why did uh, Why did Michael Massey lose his job then? I think a lot of pressure was put on him by um, you know one of our competitors on the FIA, and I think uh, I think it was unfair to be honest with you. I think uh, it was. A, it was a shame, um, but uh, yeah, there's a new president that's uh, that's come in. That's obviously he's inherited this this issue, and they're putting a new structure uh, in place to bring him back. You know, one of the most experienced guys, you know, Herbie Blash, uh, to be sitting in race control as well, which I think is you know, is a positive thing. These were the comments he went on to make after that concluded. So was it right to fire him based on pressure from a rival team? That's just what we looked at. Mercedes, of course, declined to comment. But um, yeah, there's so many angles you can look at this from. I'm just surprised that Horner doesn't just, you know, take the victory as it is and just sit back and relax. At the end of the day, I don't want to get into all the Abu Dhabi drama again. It's been discussed to death, of course. But it is, of course, interesting also that he's talking about pressure placed on him from a rival team or, you know, placed on him from Mercedes, placed on the FIA, you right, to potentially get rid of him from Mercedes. Like, um, you know, there was also pressure you could argue put on him in the you know, over the communication from Jonathan Wheatley in the final race to make the decision he did end up making. Also making the point about the way the rules are broken, like, you know, just covering ground that he doesn't necessarily need to cover. Seems to me like, obviously, he's a team principal, but he also just loves stirring things up before the season. I feel like he just does it for the fun of it, just to get people talking. And honestly, like, feels like Red Bull are kind of going into this uh, villain-esque role. They did a lot of things towards the end of last year. Like, I feel like no one really talks about the fact that in the final race, Perez retired in somewhat suspicious circumstances. There was rumours initially after the race, not sure if these have been disproven or whatever, that they deliberately given Perez not enough fuel to get to the end of the race so that he would have a lighter car so he could, well, slow down Lewis as he managed to do successfully. Then they retired him. Perez over the radio seemed kind of surprised that his engine had just given out for some reason. And then he goes into the garage. So again, some suspicious stuff. So it does seem to me that Red Bull are pretty much going to do everything to try and get over the line at the end of last year, which they, of course, did at the end with some help from Michael Massey. So no real surprise that Horner's kind of defending him, but it's just a surprise to me that he's going to these lengths to do so, to be honest. A couple of things to mention before we finish up the video. This from the Haas side, there was obviously been some discussion as to who's going to replace Mazepin, whether it's going to be Pietro Fittipaldi coming in permanently, as he is, I believe, going to be at the test. But apparently there's been some candidates being discussed. First of all, Joe Vanazzi we've talked about. Also, apparently, Kevin Magnussen could be making his return. There also was some talk about Nico Hulkenberg, but I'm not really sure what they're going to do. But those are kind of the three names that I've heard in discussion these last few days. This also from the Bahrain test, of course, going on this weekend. Drones to debut to improve the TV show. So I believe four drones are going to be implemented. Not really something we've seen all that much before. You Usually it's helicopter shots and then just shots from around the track. But yeah, seemingly drones are going to give us greater shots than we've been able to get access to before. I just wanted to finish up with this. I thought it was pretty interesting for the, the entirety of last season. This is, a, well, two lines. The red line is Verstappen's points lead in the championship and the yellow line is his projected victory, well, winning chances effectively by the by the bookies. So um, as you can see, kind of in the middle of the season here around Silverstone, Verstappen had a pretty impressive lead. His winning percentage chances before that weekend went up to about 75%. Then, of course, they fell down quite a lot around Hungary and stuff like this. And then towards the end of the year when Verstappen had those few race wins in a row, going into Sao Paulo, at least, well, on the, after the Saturday, Verstappen had over an 80% chance of winning the, winning the championship. And um, of course, Hamilton started 10th. Hamilton, of course, wins that race in incredible fashion. And then by the end of the year, it's actually a, clearly the Mercedes that was the faster car going into the final day. And then Verstappen got a pretty surprise pole at Abu Dhabi. And his percentage chance going into that final race was about 40 odd percent. And of course, ends up getting the job done in controversial fashion, to say the least. But very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you are new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.